Mm. You don't seem alright. <laughs> uh-uh. Who? I don't have any, but I, I can imagine the pain. <laughs> My associates are gonna take care of Tommy Shelby, and you are gonna give us up his brother. I like that. Yes, we needed someone to be against us. Poor guy. I mean, Billy, uh, it was not your day. <laughs> someone told him. I smell light. Oh, the boy was approached before. Yeah. A ghost, really a ghost. Wanted to save fucking long. Oh, I'm stealing a car. And he's got a stack of cash from the bedding shop. It can't be a coincidence, you know. Steal from who you want. Don't steal from me. Get a train to wherever the fuck you want to go. Get out. I need four wheels. And a horse. You hands. need to learn to show some respect. Give me dad's old four wheel wagon and two strong puppies. I swear, Charlie and Johnny, I love them way too much. In comparison of that time, you know, on screen. That's spring and apple be fair. Your mother saw my watch in China. You're from a long line of thieves. Mm. I imagine she told you your dad was the Duke of the Saxon Shore. Well, I'm the Duke. It was my watch. A scar, a stolen watch, the story she made up. She was a thief Don't and a liar. Don't about yourself. That's why he tells me the spirits favor you. But the spirit is in you. She tried to sell me like one of those horses, didn't she? Yeah. I remember that watch. She used to wear it over her hand. We buried it with her. Big wagons here. Good I families come from the new forest. And the wagons fixed. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. You do? People piss me off. There are a lot of people in that betting shop. Nah. Charlie and Curly. The rest is dogs and horses. Curly is our horse himself. Do you want to stay here? He's working for the man those horses. I want to remain completely unknown. Well, we'd be in the right place for that as well. No one knows anyone here. You already have a son. Our business is two sides. Nah. Light and dark. And I'm dark. I've realised that we don't get to choose which one we are. Curly! Find a shovel. The Duke of the Saxon Shore here. We're going to be shoveling shit. It can be a good place for you, boy. But I did don't forget, uh, you know, Billy. You trust this place? Better response from the Guinness Trust. About building and charitable housing. And two sides have the permission to see the finance. Your support might help them make their decision. Will you help me? Um, since she told us Sweet that story, I'm. Um, the chauffeur will take us there. Quite the thing, dressed like that, dressed like a working man. He looks like himself. Oswald has fucked your wife, so. My suggestion is about balance and proportion. Can I assume I have your support? It's about a different kind of trust. Absolute trust. We have important work ahead of us. Mostly I do whatever I want to do. Sometimes I do things for the cause. 
In this case, it's both. Ash is a snake. A smell. <sighs> eyes. And you're freaking with a snake. With someone like Anne. In the interest of absolute clarity, that is simply the English aristocracy's way of shaking hands. Like you think that he can fall in love with you. You bitch. Is it the family or what? is it? No. Presenting you also, I mean, it's really difficult to see her face. We know that she's haunting Tommy. that inside, in fact, she already knows. She saw that seizure. It's like the clock stopped ticking and I'm waiting for the bomb to explode. You know him so well. And also yeah, how to deal is. with him. When I know everything, I will tell you everything. I'm like Lizzie, you know, like, she wants to believe him, but I'm not sure that she does, in fact. Tell me you have whiskey, I'll spend on wine. Fuck why. More whiskey. I'm celebrating. The currency here. It's blood. Blood here is like wine, like vintage wine in that bottle. It's the it's the label, it's the terroir, it's the grape the Oh, you wine. love the sound the of your one. voice, you clearly. When you come to America, I will show you things. You're going to America. To Canada. Lizzie, it's quite pine for the shipment. Michael will be there to watch this back. Ooh! I was gonna say, don't go because of Michael. Now you're gonna see that Michael is gonna watch his back. But five million dollars, Mr. Nelson. And that is the legacy. And when I come back, I will know everything. What you said to Lizzie before. You are a man with a bright and glittering future. Oh! We were on our way to my constituency in Smurvick, and I heard our American friend was in Birmingham and he was coming here. So... I love the assaults reunited. Yeah! It is remarkable how quickly our relationships have developed. Oh. So many triangles in this room. Oh my god, a triangle. Don't... I swear if you're hurt, Lizzie. Elizabeth, you are a very lucky woman to have each day what I have only solved. How fucking dare you? She deserves to die only for that. I swear on everything that I love. Sooner or later, you will have to find a spouse who's more suitable. A woman with Missy's past and personal history really isn't suitable. She doesn't deserve you, Mr. Shelby. You also, you're gonna die, you're gonna suffer. And Tommy, I swear, you're not gonna let this essence tell you what you do. You're gonna drink. You're right, she doesn't deserve me. She deserves better, you're gonna say. Truth is, I belong here at this table with fuckers like you. She doesn't, but I like to hide it. I just wanna hear. He truly thinks so. So he's forced to answer yes. What is the question? Yes. When I'm released, it is my intention to kill Tommy Shelby. 
I don't know why I'm reacting like that. Uh, I, I can't be surprised by what he just said. We know that he wants to kill Tommy. We know that these guys, they want him to kill Tommy. Like, why am I surprised? I can't be surprised. That was a fucking great episode. We had a lot of things happening into it. I said it during the intro after the last episode, which was about the characters, mostly about the characters and their developments. For sure, during this episode and the next one, the last ones of this season of this show, we're gonna have a lot of stuff happening. It's gonna be action episode. So it was great. I'm gonna talk about everything that happened. In the details, you know, it was fucking great. But the thing is that I have the impression that everything, you know, everyone is putting things in place. I'm talking about Tommy, I'm talking about the Nazi girl, I'm talking about the American guy, I'm talking about Michael and Gina, I'm talking about also Arthur, in a way. Like, you know, in the chess game, you are placing everything at the right place, in both sides, I mean, in all of the different sides, but for now, I have the impression that Tommy... No. Like, yes, he did it, but he's not gonna succeed. And you know my impression that I have since the beginning of this season, even before we had the confirmation that he has a bad health, I have the impression that he's gonna die with this show. That this show was about him. About him being the leader of the Peaky Blinders from the beginning to the end. And now that he knows that he has a bad health, he has nothing to lose anymore, like at the end of everything he can sacrifice himself, he can do something really dangerous and because of that he's gonna get killed. All of this, you know, is giving me the impression that maybe we're gonna win, I mean, the Peaky Blinders on some levels, but maybe more the family business and the family level, you know, but for the political thing and for the big thing, you know, with the American guy and all. For that, I have the impression that we're gonna lose. Tommy is gonna lose and Tommy is gonna die. At least it's the impression that the writers are giving through this episode. But you know also my rule. We have to lose a lot to win at the end. We have to lose a lot to win at the end. It's how you know, writers, they are building stories in shows, in movies, in books. The characters are living big adventures and, you know, it's up and down, up and down. And at the end of the story, we have to have a big down to finally win at the end. It's like that. So right now, I can be like, because of my rule, it's okay to have the impression that we are losing and it's in fact logical that the writers are giving me that impression that we are losing a lot because we're gonna win at the end. But because of the fact that this is <laughs> an historic show, in reality, <laughs> that rule can't be applied. So in fact, we are really gonna lose. For me, Michael, he wants to kill Tommy, we know it. And that dream that he made with Polly, it was just to confirm him that it's his destiny to kill Tommy Shelby. One of you has to die, he's gonna die like... Polly is telling you that it's his destiny to kill Tommy in a way. Okay, let's go with this episode with all of what happened during it. That was really cool to have Tommy back to be a Peaky Blinders, you know, not only because he's going back to the place where we met them, where they began everything, I'm talking about the baiting place, he was not there to me, but we were there. So we as the viewers were back with the Peaky Blinders, the basic stuff of the Peaky Blinders. That place, also Charlie and Curly, that place, all of that, but also having Tommy being dressed like that and acting like that, threatening people, making business with these people and all, like it felt great.
to be back at this place and to do the things that we are used to do. To have Arthur also being back into this place doing the things that he used to do. It felt also like he resolved the little business that he has right now. You know, about his son, about the opium place, about the Liverpool Ducks, all of that. It's also logical with the fact that during the last episode we're gonna deal with the big businesses that he has to resolve before leaving. I'm wondering about these guns coming. I'm not so sure that we're talking about guns, you know, a shipment that the Nazi guys or the American guy, like, I'm not sure that we're talking about that business. Maybe it can be for something else, for someone else. That son, you know, Erasmus, Duke, I don't know <laughs> to name him. It's great to have him, you know, finishing at this place with Curly and Charlie. That thing, you know, about Tommy who wants to have a legacy, who knows that he has a light and a dark legacy, is not telling to Duke, you're gonna take that part on that part. It's just like, you can live right there and at some point you're gonna have to, to take my legacy because yes, you are my son. It's great to have that. It's really also to me resolving that issue. He knows that he's gonna die soon, so he's telling to his son in a way you're gonna have to take the lead of this family. Not the lead of this family, but to be a part of it soon, to represent me soon. The fact that he's not saying the truth to Lizzie, it's breaking my heart because okay, you don't want to, to have her, you know, worried about you. Okay, you don't want to tell her too much, but she deserves that. She deserves at least to know what is happening with you, to prepare herself, to prepare also her family, you know, her son and all, like, to prepare things for when he's gonna die. Right there, during this episode, she had you not telling her anything, changing the code of the safe, Betraying her and her learning all of that in front of all of these assholes. She doesn't deserve that, Lizzie, for sure. Oh, and also discovering that you have an hidden son. Lizzie, she doesn't deserve that. And still, after all of that, she's with you. She loves you. She's fighting for you, like, to be present for you, to have you telling her the truth. She's just waiting for you. I'm sorry but Lizzie, she's the best woman that he never had because no matter what happened, she stayed and not only physically but also she stayed there for him, to support him, to be there for him. And I'm not saying that she's doing that, you know, because she's blindly in love and like she's weak or something like that, not at all. She's staying right there, but she's also seeing what she thinks and she's also, you know, pushing him and stuff like that. So for me, in my opinion, she was the best for him. I'm glad that he said at least that he loves her, you know, to her. And in front of these guys, he said that she doesn't deserve him because he's just like them and she deserves better. He didn't say it like that, but that's what he implied. Sleeping with that woman, clearly that was just for business. You didn't need to, to say it out loud, you. And you didn't need to say it to Lizzie, to hurt her. And really just for that, you deserve to die. She deserved to die before that. Let's be clear about it. Since she told us that story, that happened in front of her eyes and all, she deserves to die. But right there, for a personal reason, she deserves to die also. Same for Mosley, same for... Oh, all of them. These three, I hate them. But again, I'm not sure that we can win against all of them. I'm not forgetting, you know, the fact that you said to Gina to be a spy for you, 
And Gina, okay. I said it since the beginning, she's gonna be loyal to Michael until the end. Oh, I don't know. I don't know anymore what to think about the situation with Gina. With Michael, I think that he's gonna want his revenge no matter what, but the fact that we have Gina right there and you tried to manipulate her... Ah, oh, I think that it can be important at some point. Maybe it can help us, in fact. Arthur and Linda... I don't know what to think about it. Like... Arthur, he was glad for her to be back, she's gonna help him. It can be good for him, but the fact that she's doing that for money, like... She's gonna do that until what? Until she's gonna need more money, and in fact... Tommy is gonna be dead, so she's not gonna be able to have that money. So she's gonna leave Arthur. I'm not a fan of the idea since the beginning, I want Arthur to be okay by himself. And he began to be okay by himself, so that's why I'm like, do we really need Linda to be there? But again, it's Tommy trying to resolve all of the issues that he has before leaving, before dying. Finn is married and we didn't see that. I feel that really like a betrayal, you know? The fact that we didn't see it, the fact that we don't care about it, the fact that they're announcing it just like that. I want to talk with this girl. <laughs> it's really like my little brother feel like... Uh, in what world we were not invited? <laughs> I'm shocked. The fact that the American guy, Jack, he want to see Billy just after that business, you know, with Billy being forced to kill that guy because of Arthur seeing you so and you're telling him to go after Arthur like he has to know what happened into this place into this room he has to know that Billy has something against Arthur who can tell him that give him that news for me it's a boy Duke I'm still wondering about that but see, again, the writers, they are giving me the impression that Tommy is gonna die, we knew it, but also Arthur. It would be so bad, but on the other hand, I said it during the intro, I have trouble to project a future with Arthur being alive, you know, without Tommy. Without Tommy being there to canalize him. I have trouble to have Arthur, you know, Learning that his brother died and what? He's gonna do what, Arthur? That's why I began to imagine that Arthur could die. Also because of the fact that he's beginning to get better and for the writers to have Arthur getting better, it's not possible. So for sure, they're gonna kill him. <laughs> and right there, now we have that threat around him with Billy. During the next episode, we're gonna have Tommy away in Canada and with the threat of Michael with Michael you know threatening his life and we're gonna have Arthur in England with Billy threatening his life you know we're gonna deal with the two situations in the next episode in the last episode for the end of this show on both places you know things that we can have at our advantages Gina was a spy for you, Tommy. I didn't forget also about Salomon, the fact that he's involved into the business, like we had Tommy talking with him at some point, maybe he's continuing to talk with him and we don't know it. We have the fact that Tommy said everything about these meetings to Churchill. So maybe they can intervene at some point, not on this ground, but you know, for the business. We have the shipment, you know, of guns. I'm still not sure of who is gonna have this shipment. And in England, we have what? To protect Arthur, you know? All of the Peaky Blinders around him. Duke also, like, I mean Erasmus, Duke, I don't care <laughs> for his name. But the fact that we placed him right there, okay, it's something right. But I think that they didn't introduce him only for Tommy's legacy. 
I think that it's going to be useful also at some point to me said it he has to earn his place into this family maybe it can be during the next episode by saving Arthur or something like that because he's going to be right there but no one is going to know his real name so maybe he can discover something he can learn something that can be useful oh I'm worried for the next episode not only because it's going to be the last one and I think that Tommy is going to die during it but also because really during this episode the writers made it really on purpose to, to make the viewers worried like to have the impression that Tommy is preparing himself but not enough that the other ones they have things in place that Tommy doesn't know about which is right but I think also that maybe what the writers are not telling us it's what Tommy has in place that we don't know about. Like we have little things about it but not enough to see the big picture and maybe it can help. I'm like maybe we can have things like that to save the business, to save the family and all. But the situation with Michael, no. We have nothing for that. Except for Gina but again to have her as a spy I don't know how we can use that really. We can use it for the business, but we can't use it for the Michael part. Michael, you know, he wants a professional revenge for sure, but he wants also a personal revenge. And that one, we can't do anything against it. Only Polly can do something about it. And during this dream, she only reminded him that it is his destiny to, to kill Tommy at least for one of them to be killed by the other one it's not good at all okay, I'm gonna stop this review right now in the comments what you thought of this episode tell me also what you think about the last one that we're gonna have if you think that Tommy is gonna die or not if Arthur is gonna die or not also I read some of your comments, you know, one of you told me no, Tommy, he can't die. I can't imagine them doing a movie without him or something else without him. It's something that they announced to us. You know what I think about that? Wait for the money guy to announce it. The writer, he can say, I want it, but maybe he's not gonna have it. The casting, same. Wait really for the money guy to announce what we're gonna have, if we're gonna have something else. But for me, I responded to that comment, I think saying that for me it's possible to have something else without Tommy this show can be really about Tommy era you know as the lead of the Peaky Blinders and the movies, the spin-offs, the thing can be about the Peaky Blinders how it ended for them, how this group ended oh I'm gonna be really in stress I think for the next and last episode for the end of this show it's gonna be something, you know, to say goodbye to this show. Peaky Blinders, it was the first show that I really binge-watched entirely, you know, since episode 1, season 1, with you guys on my channel. The other ones, you know, began at the first episode of a season, not the first season. After that, I binge-watched shows since the beginning, but Peaky Blinders, it was the first one. Okay stop this review right now so it's all for me and for you for today so it's all for me for now so bye for now bye wait a minute wait a minute doc uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine Great.